It's so frustrating, isn't it? You're doing everything you believe to be right, but you just can't lose that extra weight. You have hit weight loss resistance. In this video, I'm gonna outline five reasons why you can't lose weight, and I'm going to give you the solution for each one. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of Keto Flex and the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. This video is gonna come as a shocker to many of you because it's going to reveal some of the reasons why you've hit this weight loss resistance. And number five on this list is probably the most important one to understand. What you're not gonna find on this list is eating less and moving more. You might be doing that right now, counting your calories, counting your macros. Look, I believe calories matter, but they're not important. It's just a huge distraction to where it really matters. What really matters are your 600 plus hormones in your body and how they connect to your cells to produce that specific job. For example, here is an illustration of one cell. There's about 50 to 70 trillion cells inside of your body right now. Every cell has these receptor sites on them that connect and communicate with your hormones, including your fat burning hormones. Think of these receptor sites as an antenna signal. The job of an antenna is to receive signals and to do a specific job. The job for your receptor sites is to receive the signals from your hormones to produce a specific job. What's getting in the way of this communication is cellular inflammation. It's like if you were screaming at me right now, but I had my fingers in my ears, I would not be able to hear your message. You would be frustrated, I would be frustrated, and there will be dysfunction and dis-ease, and then there will be a symptom that will manifest. Well, having extra weight right now, that is your symptom. It's not a weight problem. Nobody in the history of this world has ever had a weight problem. It is a weight symptom. Therefore, we get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. And that's what I'm gonna teach you in these five simple steps. Everything I'm teaching you here is outlined to reduce inflammation so your body could burn fat as a side effect. Let's start with reason number one, not getting quality sleep. Hear me out here. When it comes to sleep, specifically stage four delta sleep, which is called deep sleep, that's when most of your fat burning hormones are activated and doing their job. Not necessarily at the gym or during your workout, but during stage four sleep. And we wanna make sure we're getting plenty of stage four sleep. There was a fascinating study, which I'll reference in the notes down below, that showed lack of quality sleep resulted in the body's ability to burn less fat, regardless of any dietary changes they made. And the reason is simple. When you're not getting quality sleep, the following morning, you're gonna have higher levels of cortisol and glucose and insulin follows, which is gonna put you in a fight or flight state and a fat storage state. So the first tip for you, the first solution is for you to get at least seven hours of quality sleep starting tonight. I do have a previous video on how to get quality sleep, which I'll reference down below. I also put a card right here for you to watch after this video. Reason number two, you're sticking with the same diet for too long. Look, I'm a big fan of keto. I think keto, the ketogenic diet, is a powerful way to reduce inflammation and help you burn fat. But I don't think you should be doing keto long-term and all the time, just like I don't think you should be doing any diet long-term. When we think about our ancestors, every single one of our ancestors changed their diet. They rotated their foods because they ate according to what their environment gave them. So when we stick with the same foods, for too long, what happens is your body reaches a homeostasis. So what we wanna do is create a change. We wanna create adaptation. For example, when you think about the greatest fitness coaches out there and personal trainers, what do they all have in common? They always change up the routine and the workout schedule for their clients, which keeps the body guessing, forces the body to adapt, and that client gets amazing results. You wouldn't go to the gym and do the same workout over and over and over at the same weight over, over and over for weeks and months and months because you begin to plateau. So we wanna create a positive stress. This is called hormesis. And you do that by simply changing the foods you're eating or adding in intermittent fasting or changing your intermittent fasting schedule. 
The point is to mix things up, change the foods you're eating, and watch your body adapt and accelerate fat burning as it creates that adaptation. The third reason is you're probably eating inflammatory fats. I'm a big fan of healthy, clean fats, but it turns out there are a set of really bad inflammatory fats that create more inflammation, more weight gain, and more weight loss resistance than sugar and processed carbs. And these fats are called industrial seed oils, also known as vegetable oils. They are highly inflammatory, and some studies suggest that it can create inflammation around your cell and cell membranes for three to 12 months, which blocks your fat burning hormones from doing their job. So here's the list of the bad fats I want you to avoid so you can break through this weight loss stall. Canola oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, rice bran oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, and safflower oil. These are very unstable and they will lead to weight loss resistance. Instead, switch over to stable fats that reduce inflammation and help you ramp up fat burning, such as avocado oil, olive oil, almond oil, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, duck fat, and even lard. These are going to be much, much stable. I would even throw coconut oil into that mix. Before I get to number four and number five, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please hit the thumbs up button on this video so YouTube knows you're getting value from it. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Please consider hitting the subscribe button with that little bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video. Number four on the list is going to be snacking. Here's a crazy stat for you. The average American is eating 17 to 23 times per day. Now, before you hit stop because you think this is a bogus claim, Think about it. The handful of almonds the person is grabbing, the sip of the kombucha, the protein bar. Look, even if it's the healthiest snack in the world, carrots and hummus, whatever it is, that creates an insulin response. And when you think about the hormones in the body, there's over 600 hormones in the body, but only one of those hormones store fat, and that hormone is insulin. Insulin is the bully of the block, meaning when you're activating insulin, your fat burning hormones are running away, they're scattered. When you snack, you raise glucose and insulin. So snacking is a meal to the body and the average person is doing that 17 to 23 times per day. It's keeping them in a storage of fat state versus a lean fasted state. So if you're eating in between your meals, cut that out right now and you'll see the number on the scale begin to budge down. The last item on my list here is probably the most important one to understand because it is the number one cause of cellular inflammation and the number one cause of weight loss resistance, and that is toxicity. When we think about toxins, we know that we live in the most toxic world than ever before in human history. Yes, there's toxins coming from car fumes, your cleaning supplies, your water supply, your food supply, but it's even worse than that. There are these heavy metals, specifically mercury, lead, and then we also have other toxins like glyphosate that really create a problem in the body leading to cellular inflammation. Now, where do we get lead? Where do we get mercury? Well, for example, lead is passed on through our parents. Mom loses bone during pregnancy and lead is stored in bone and that lead goes into the baby. And that ha so it's a generational toxicity issue. Also, we know if you've lived in a house before 1978 that was built before 1978, that house probably had or has lead-based paint before it was outlawed. And we store that lead in the bones, that creates a big problem. The other issue is mercury. Mercury can be found in silver amalgam fillings. 55% of every silver amalgam filling contains the super toxin, heavy metal, mercury. And that mercury, vaporizes from that tooth from organic mercury and it crosses the blood brain barrier and it gets stored in the hypothalamus pituitary as inorganic mercury and it's locked in there unless you pull it out the right way. Why is that important? Well, the hypothalamus pituitary is the control tower for your fat burning hormones, all of your hormones, including your organs like your thyroid as well, your thyroid gland. So when we have dysfunction up here, it doesn't matter how good your diet is and how much fasting you're doing or whatever exercise you're doing, it's going to be an issue. We got to go upstream and remove the metals. So for sure, seek out a holistic biological dentist, 
get safe amalgam removal, but then we want to actually do a true cellular detox protocol. And I teach this. I actually have a small group that I'm taking through a 90-day detox program. You can learn more about that over at ketocampdetox.com. I'll put a link for it down below. But I really want you to understand how important it is to optimize this hypothalamus pituitary, which is that control tower. Here's an analogy I got from my mentor, Dr. Pampa. Think of that hypothalamus pituitary as the control tower at the airport. You have these air traffic controllers that sit on the, in these stands that are directing the traffic of the airplanes. Well, if that control tower is dysfunctioning somehow, maybe they didn't get quality sleep or they showed up drunk, it's going to make bad decisions. You're going to have airplanes flying too close to each other and you might even have a catastrophe with airplanes hitting each other. So we want to make sure we're optimizing that control tower so the airplanes can fly efficiently. We also want to make sure we're optimizing the hypothalamus pituitary control tower so it could regulate and communicate with those hormones, including your fat burning hormones to do its job. So that's the analogy that I want you to really understand. Those are the five tips. I want to hear from you real quick. Which one resonated with you the most out of those five tips? Was it the sleep? Was it sticking with the same diet for too long? Was it the inflammatory fats? Was it the snacking? Or was it the toxicity? Let me know in the comment section down below. I also recently made a video on five easy ways to lose weight, which picks up where this video is leaving. And if you want to learn more about that, these are very practical things that you could start implementing today to get your body to ramp up its fat burning hormones. I encourage you to click the video on the screen you see in front of you right now and watch that next video. And please hit the thumbs up on this video if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video.